So what's the next thing Peter says? He says, be sober, be vigilant. Listen to the definition of vigilant. To be watchful, wide awake, sleepless, keenly alert to or heedful of trouble or danger, as while others are sleeping or unsuspicious, right? When we are saved, we are to be watchful. We ought to be wide awake. We should be suspicious of everything, right? It's not suspicious in a scary way, right? You know, or being nervous, but we should be attentive. We should always be paying attention to everything that's going on around us. Guess what? When I was in the world, you know, and, and running the streets and the gang, hustling, selling drugs, doing all these different things, I had to be watchful of everything that was going on around me because I'm watching out for setups. I'm watching out for other gang members. I'm watching out for other drug dealers. I'm watching out for the police. You know, whether that's them doing their job or doing something that they shouldn't be doing, I had to always be watchful. So how much more do you think you need to be watchful, especially in the spirit when it comes to spiritual warfare, right? Like even more, because that's where the true war is. It isn't just in what we see naturally, but it's in the things that we can't see. It's in the things that's happening in the background that's causing people to act up and do certain things. So we want to be able to discern that and recognize that so that we know how to handle these situations. But I want you to turn with me to Matthew 28, uh, uh, excuse me, Matthew 26, verses 38 through 41. And we just was in Matthew 26 because there's a reason, once again, why Peter is saying this. Now, we're talking about being, you know, not being spiritually asleep, right? Um, because that's what this is about. You know, uh, while others are sleeping, while they're spiritually asleep, there's so many people that you can talk to that they're continually talking about this world like it's going to get better, like things are going to change, like, you know, like this world isn't passing away and another is coming, right? Why? Because they're asleep, right? They're asleep spiritually. But... The reason why Peter can break this down so beautifully is because once again, he went through this, you know, on both sides, naturally and spiritually. Let's read Matthew 26 and we're going to start in that 38 verse. Matthew 26 uh, verse 38 reads as follows. Then saith unto them. Now, this is Jesus talking. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and what? and watch with me. Remember what the definition of be vigilant was, right? To be watchful. Jesus says, listen, tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, he says, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And here's the most beautiful word, most famous word of all. Nevertheless, I've talked about this in the past. Do you possess a nevertheless? That word nevertheless means however. Jesus says, listen, however, not as I will, but as thou will. Yes, this is uncomfortable what I'm going through and what I'm getting ready to, to have to do. But nevertheless, however, if it's your will, I'm willing to go through it. How many of us could say that about situations we're in right now? Do you have a nevertheless? Do you really possess a nevertheless? But Jesus says, however, because this is when we when we're in this type of position where Jesus is, this shows us if we are truly abiding in the Lord. Right. If we truly are resting in the Lord, because when we go through these trials and tribulations and different situations, when we're able to say, however, God. However, I got to go through this. I want to make sure I go through it the right way so that you can be glorified in it. That's what this that's what this this whole journey is about. Right. When we connect with the Lord, this is what it's about. Him being honored and glorified in how we handle these situations by his strength, by his power, by his spirit. But Jesus says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. What is what is the definition of be vigilant or, or the definition of vigilant? It's not to be sleep, right? Now, we know that it means spiritually, but here Peter was dealing with it naturally and spiritually, really, right? So it says, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter. He, he directed to him. What would ye not watch with me one hour? You couldn't you couldn't be vigilant one hour. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He was unable to stay awake naturally 
or spiritually. Why? Because he didn't pray. He wasn't watchful. Right. And what ended up happening? He cuts off Malchus's ear. He flips out on the people and cuts them out. Why? Because he wasn't prepared. He wasn't sober. He wasn't vigilant. Right. He wasn't focused on what it is that he needed to be focused on to make sure that he would do what it is that God wanted him to do in that hour. Now, thankfully, God is a merciful God. Right. Because we know Peter's story. We know that after he ran off crying, he went back fishing. And another thing that's ironic is that we see that Peter was already a leader because when he went back fishing, fishing and doing his own thing, you know, almost like a form of backsliding, going back to his old life. Others went with him. There was others that went with him just to show you his influence. Right. And it shows us, too, that there are people that's connected to us that if they see us and, and, and I don't mean to put this pressure on you, that if they see us kind of fall back. And, and, and remove ourselves out of the things of God and get discouraged and no longer believe in God and walk off, they may walk off as well, right? But we see the mercy of God in his story because God, Jesus went, you know, found them, restored them, and we see what happened in the book of Acts chapter one. You know, we see what happens all the way through the book of Acts. And if you guys uh, haven't, then you need to go and read that starting in that first chapter, right? He uses Peter mightily. He restores them. He says, listen, do you love me? Oh, Lord, yes, I love you. Well, feed my sheep. Do you love me?